David Simon. Mm -hmm. uh, he recently tweeted uh, using the N-word. You know about that? Nah. The N-word is interesting. You know, it's one of those, as I said, switches, inferiority, superiority switches. And the N-word, unfortunately, it's a word. And, you know, it's just a switch, really. Click. Well, what had happened was, this was when Trump was running for president still. And there was a town hall about black issues. Uh -huh. And the host they got for this was Wait. Sean Hannity. So he tweeted, my N-word. If they can get a ta Nahisi or a D-Ray to host, then who but you on the pulse of black America? That's just ridiculous. Um, I don't, I'm not one of those people that feels like I don't want the weight of that word to just be around me my whole goddamn life. You know what I mean? It's been well, my well, you whole had, life. You had a thing when you were working on Next Day Air. Yeah, we couldn't say, we, yeah. I think we couldn't say it on the set. Yeah. I didn't come up with that. I, 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 was it Most Def? You and Most Def, I guess? Me, were? Most Def, um, my, my, my homeboy, Eni Clemens, who produced it with me. Um, yeah, I forgot who, I think it was the director, Benny Boom, who came up with the no N-word thing. I don't really agree with that, you know, um, in the cinematic sense. You, you got to say what you got to say, but yeah, you won't hear that word in that movie, which is kind of cool at this point. I'm not, that's a distraction, man. You know, oh, it's the N-word. Oh my God, who said it? Who said it? I'm hurt. You know what I'm saying? Either fight, but it, either it's a fight or a dance. So if you come in the dance, then I ain't no dancer. Me personally would have, I'm not a dancer. So I'm a fighter more than anything. I fight for roles, I fight for my culture. I'm just a fighter. I think that the N-word coming from David Simon, it don't mean nothing to me. I don't care. I don't care about that. I'm more concerned about Trump and Sean Hannity and the people that Trump puts in office who affect uh, our lives moving forward. It, you yeah, know. I mean, it's just such a, it's the most loaded word in it the is English loaded. language. It is loaded. It's, like, like it, you know what I'm saying? Because when you, you know, like for example, I never say it, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. If I'm quoting a, a song, I'll just skip that word. Right. If right. I have to say it, I'll say the N word. Right, right. Because it's one of those things where if a, if a white person, a black person gets into an argument, it almost seems like the white person has that, that card they mm -hmm. can pull out. You know what I mean? If they're losing the argument, they can pull that out. Yeah. And, and, and get a reaction. Yeah, and get a reaction at bare, at bare minimum. Because you I said, it's saying? like a switch. But yeah. Nowadays, younger, we, listen, the younger generation, they don't give a shit about that. You think? You think Lil Yachty care if somebody say the N-word? You think these young cats care about that? They don't. Well, now, not all of them. Not all of them are that way. It's just that it's been seduced into culture so much. You hear all different cultures say, yo, you say the N-word to each other. Right. Puerto Ricans use it. Yeah, Puerto Ricans. Asians use it. Hip-hop people use it. Hip-hop. White people use it. The, it's just in the hip hop. It's part of the words. The, it's, it's a word that means so many different things, and, and none of it's necessarily all that good. But you know, you, it could be a word of. You can have an endearing way to use it, or you know, it's a word. It's a word, man. I'm I'm just sick of the weight of it. I'm sick of the weight of it because it's just a switch. Click. Did I bother you yet? Hmm. Nah, you ain't fucking bother me. So that dance is over. So let, now let's fight, because that's a dance. Yeah. Nigger. Okay, they go to the dance part, but here come the fight, because you know, it, it's it's black culture is full of. We have the greatest metaphor, boxers. You know, we have an army of those guys. It's an army of Ali's and Mayweather's and Tyson's in the black culture in the hood. Now they're not really here anymore, because I think that we we they they're, they they aren't um, there's not been nutrient support of them. Um, people who can be fighters for the culture aren't there anymore. There's no Tupac voice. There's right. no hip hop doing it. Hip hop don't do shit. I mean, you see a little bit of it. You see Kendrick. You see J. I love Cole. Kendrick. And he's the only, and he, those two yeah. come to mind for sure. He actually was in my mind when I said it. <laughs> yeah, because he is, and he is young. So, I, you know, yeah. that's why I said, well, little Yachty, and then I kind of, yeah, right away I thought, well, Kendrick Lamar is a person with that sentiment. But it yeah. takes. It take a lot, man, for things to right, happen. Right, because, I mean, when we were younger, conscious hip-hop was the dominant 
part of hip hop. Yeah, definitely. Like Public Enemy at one point was considered number the hottest one. shit. That was the number one. Period. It didn't matter if you were white, black, Asian, yeah. Spanish, you loved Public Enemy. Yeah. Even if what they were saying you couldn't exactly relate Which to. Which is bizarre actually, if you really think about it, the success they had is, is I can't see another group doing that. I it didn't happen it was, with uh, X-Clan, didn't happen with Dead Press. I think it was the, the Bomb Squad, the production. The production was so good. You know, and then, you know, you had the voice, yeah, you know, the, yeah. the Chuck D with the, right, with the, the Flavor squad. Flav, but then the Bomb Squad, the, you know, I mean, to the point where I thought Ice Cube's best album was America's Most Wanted, which is all the Bomb Squad. You know, I mean, matter of fact, I remember when I interviewed Russell, Russell Simmons, he told me that the Bomb Squad saved Def Jam. Wow. He said that that production, that like at that time, Def Jam was in trouble. You know, they didn't really have a lot. Well, you of couldn't have a bomb squad today. It'd cost a lot of money because in one the song they had yeah. fifteen samples. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was the golden era where you got away with all. Got away that with stuff shit. Yeah. The when, biz, yeah. When Beastie Boys did Paul's Boutique and had like seven hundred right yeah. samples like, <laughs> like and all that. Song. Yeah. Right. No, I mean th- that, that's what it was. Um, but yeah, you you don't see. It's not as ubiquitous today. Mm-hmm. You just mm-hmm. have the. The, spr- the sprinklings of light it. sprinkles. Yeah, 